Good morning. It's one of the saddest statements in Scripture from 1 Samuel 20. Saul is angered that his son Jonathan appears to be more loyal to his covenant friend David than he is to his own father, who is the king. And when it's made evident in a conversation, the king loses it. I mean, really bad. Verse 30. Then Saul's anger was kindled against Jonathan, and he said to him, You son of a perverse, rebellious woman, do I not know that you have chosen the son of Jesse to your own shame and to the shame of your mother's nakedness? Basically, he cussed him out. He accused him of being perverse. That's the word for wicked. Rebellious because he wouldn't go along with dad's plan for killing David. That word shame means idolater. Uh, He's inferring that David is being idolized by Jonathan, which isn't true. And the reference to his mother's nakedness was the idea of him doing something so inappropriate, something that shouldn't be seen by others. Now, what would others think to see the son of the king choosing to be loyal to the dad's enemy? So Saul lets him have it with his words. Now, the rhyme goes, sticks and stones may break my bones, but words can never hurt me. That is not true. Words can and do hurt. That's why people say them. They intend to inflict pain upon the hearer. But even that wasn't enough for the king. He had a spear nearby. And we've already learned that someone should take that thing away from the king. He can't handle the temptation to throw it when he's stirred to anger. And here, he's so raging mad at Jonathan that he does that. It's also irrational. I mean, he, he's going to reason with his son telling him, Listen, you're aren't gonna, you aren't going to be the next king if you don't join with me in getting rid of David. But then he takes his spear and throws it at Jonathan to kill him. And the way it's worded, it isn't just to pin him against the wall like he intended with David. In that moment of rage, he wants to kill his son. You know, I've wondered as I think about that scene, if he glimpsed Jonathan's face as he ducked out of the way of the spear. If the words had not heard him, surely his father trying to kill him did. And we'll look at Jonathan's response tomorrow. But today, I want to invite you to consider the words of your mouth and the meditations of your heart. Your heart. Do you think on things that are good and true and right and noble and pure and admirable and excellent and praiseworthy? Philippians 4, 8. Or do you think on things that are not good, not true, not right, dishonorable, not excellent? certainly don't bring praise to God. That's something to consider, the meditation of your heart, your thought life. Because from that thought life comes your words, the things that you speak that are to be loving and helpful and hopeful and faith-inspiring. Even if you have to offer correction and a rebuke, it's done with the intention of expressing love in that way and helping the person you're speaking to, not hurting them. So for me, I often pray the prayer from Psalm 19, 14. So as we conclude today, perhaps you might want to pray that along with me and then consider your heart and your words and actions that come from what's in your heart. Here's the prayer. We know that God will answer it because it's Scripture and it pleases him and honors him. It is his way. So here's how we would pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable and pleasing in your sight. O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. listening to Mornings with Pastor Jim. This podcast is a ministry of Family Church PC. 
For more information or to contact us, go to familychurchpc.com. Have a blessed day.